Let's see what he does, whether he's able to lay bat on ball, because if he does, he can hit the ball a long, long way. That's a situation for Pakistan. They should win from here with five wickets in hand, but so much pressure here at Eden Park. Anything could happen. That partnership between Javid and Linsman Al Huck, 87 of 64 balls, has put Pakistan in with a big chance. And the pressure now really on the New Zealanders to defend this total of 262. Umpire Shepard staying there as cool as a cucumber. I'm not sure about John Wright, the acting captain. He's trying to get the field exactly right. He's got tons of time to do it in. Wasn't on strike, he's won. Jarvis at the other end's on 50. Great finish to it, great final, David. It's all building up tremendously here. And no one's going to worry about taking their time. John Wright still... John Wright is still placing the field. And he's going to make sure he gets it absolutely right. Certainly sudden death here at Eden Park. And there's no way John Wright's going to make a mistake just by rushing things. Pressure's really on bowler Danny Morrison. He's been quite expensive, Danny Morrison. He's a quickish bowler, no wicket for 40 off seven. 35 runs required, 30 balls to be bowled. The crowd all sitting on the edge of their seats. Full house at Eden Park, around about 40,000. Morrison the bowler. Pushes it. Jarvis a bit slow, he doesn't pick it up for once. Harris doesn't pick up, he's been brilliant at cover this time, doesn't pick up the half volley, there's been a lot of run-outs in the World Cup, they are so important in the final overs. Well there you are, the, normally speaking you might just have a theory saying that the side with the most run-outs might be the side at the top of the table, obviously Australia have been knocked out already, but England there, they're in there, South Africa in there, Pakistan, well they've done it the hard way, they've not run people out, they won their matches with a, a combination of batting and bowling and the fielding well, they've just taken what's come. But certainly fielding in the World Cup has been a major part of it. It's always a question that the fielding side, especially in these closing overs, must keep their head. Must keep a cool head and just uh, back themselves to win. And New Zealand was favourites in this match, particularly when they made the 262 for seven or 50 overs. They batted beautifully, Crow, a magnificent 91. Great support from Rutherford with 50, but now they're great performer, Jarvid Meehan, that he's as cool as a cucumber and across. He's been there a fair while for his 50. He's been the anchor for Pakistan. Inzaman al a magnificent 60. Imran and Ramiz Raja, 44 apiece. 29 balls remaining. Jarvid chips it to mid on, just the single. And you can see Wazam Akram, he'll certainly go for it. He's such an excitable cricketer with the ball, Wazam Akram. He, he's flat out with the ball. There's Jarvid giving instructions. Find the gaps, take your time. Jab 51 off 63 balls face, a strike rate of 81. At the other end, Wasam Akram, he's an excitable cricketer. Big hitter, short boundaries, 50 metres, 60 metre boundaries here at Eden Park. A lot of six has been hit in this match already. And it's Danny Morrison going around the wicket to Wasam Akram. Harris for cover, no run, it's a dot ball, listen to the crowd. Well, every dot ball counts. It's the reverse of every run counting. Martin Crowe can do nothing about it. He's watching from the bottom of the stand there. Powerless to control what goes out on the field, that's in the hands of John Wright. Already Martin Crowe's done a lot this competition, and 91 again today, set his side on the way to a big, big total. It's a horrible feeling. John Wright there, he's the man who knows what to do, he's been through this before, but not in a World Cup semi-final. Well, runs are on the board, aren't they, for New Zealand, so they're still favourites, but uh, one feels that Wazza Macklin's very toe on stock, there's stump vision, you see Danny Morrison coming in around the wicket to the left-hander. Full toss, he beats it, that go all the way, that's four! That's what Pakistan wanted, it was a full pitch, Wazza Macklin near to the crease, got back to ball. Well, John Wright knows that Wazza Macklin is very strong over long on, and he's not got a man on the cover boundary. So Akram giving himself room, and he's found the gap. That's perfect placement, just what Pakistan and Akram needed at this stage. Morrison just straying in length there, a little bit too full, and giving the batsman room to hit. Imagine how the ball feels in John Morrison's hands. He's been very expensive in front of his home crowd. Danny Morrison, John Morrison, 
Bucks commentating in the commentary box next door. It's all happening. It's got to be a wide, and it's Cole. Morrison pushes it down, leg side umpire Shepard has had a great series. Cole's wide. David Shepard very confident in this call here, and indeed Danny Morrison straying down the leg side this time. There's a lot of pressure out there for these boys. And they're definitely under the spotlight. You've got 40,000 of your home crowd here watching you bowl. You've got many more watching on television. You've got your first chance ever of a World Cup final looming at the end of a match. That is pressure. And that was the first wide bowled by New Zealand in the innings. So they bowled quite tidily. He's hit that down the mid-off. There's a sweeper. Latham just the single. Pakistan are doing enough here. They're certainly batting with a lot of confidence. Javed Me and Dad, the master batsman, tactician, controlling things in the centre. Been great support from Wazim Akram, Inzaman Al Haq. What a gem of a knock that was. Inzaman played like a man who'd been playing World Cup cricket semi finals all his life. He came in when the situation was looking bleak for Pakistan. If he timed the ball, he controlled the ball, he kept his head. And it was only brilliant fielding from Chris Harris that eventually ran him out. And that was a perfect innings at a perfect time for Pakistan. just pushes the last ball over the mid-wicket, no run. It's 5 to 236. Well, it looks as though uh, Martin Crowe's enjoying himself there. A little bit of a nervous smile, I think, uh, son of... Yes, I think uh, he realises that uh, if he had been on the field, maybe things might have been a little different. He might have been able to control uh, the happenings uh, on the field but off the field you really can't do much well, that's it four overs to be bowled five wickets in hand and run rate still 6.75 per over well if you were the batting captain now you'd fancy your chances and with someone like Jared Meandad there who's mega experience in this sort of problem You'd say you'd have to back your side, but Imran Khan now will be just hoping that these two batsmen keep their head. Wazi Makram, who is partnering Javadi and Javid Miandat, he's a potentially lethal striker of cricket ball, hasn't been in great form during this World Cup, so he'll be feeling the pressure just as much as all the other players out there on the field. I'd say everybody here at Eden Park's under pressure at the moment. It's a magnificent semi final, a quality match. Watson gets a leading edge and it beats cover point. They're through for one. Wasn't acting as quick. He's coming back for the second. He's very fast. Here's the throw. He's home. Racing down the, the, the track there, was him Akram. He didn't even bother looking when he turned there, Akram. He just went for two. He got to the far end, turned on a sixpence and came sprinting back again. Pakistani supporters make as much noise as they can. They're outnumbered here today at Eden Park, not surprisingly, but they'll be just as noisy. Watson around the wicket. He's charged. He bowled in. Oh, an available wicket for New Zealand. Was a Macklem Queen bowled for nine. It's five for 238. Well, if anyone's kept the cool head, it's Willie Watson there. He's kept the ball up, he's kept it straight, and he's defeated Lazzy Macklem's belligerent intent. Macklem down the wicket. Looking to hit the ball over the top, but the perfect line and length from Willie Watson cramps him up and has come off the toe, off the pad, onto the leg stump, and Pakistan's hopes dealt another blow there. Akram out for nine, Pakistan now 238 and six wickets down. For grabs. It was a vital wicket by Watson, he's remained cool, he's only a part of Willie Watson, he's a good genuine seamer, he's kicking the ball up, he's knocked over Wasim Akram for nine, at six for 238, now only four wickets in hand for Pakistan, admittedly Jarvis at the other end, but the run rate required 6.81 per over. Well the run rate was up to around about eight and over at one stage, needed by Pakistan, so they've certainly dragged it back from that. And there isn't much margin for error left now, Miandad of course the man in charge of the Pakistan innings, he's got to dominate from now on. Noam Khan, the wicketkeeper coming out, John Wright, his heart will be pounding away, the acting captain. 
was a vital wicket because Wozniakum was all firepower for Pakistan. So the big guns are gone as far as hitting is concerned. Has to be placement now for Pakistan. No run, the man's very short. Backward point, that's right himself, about 10 metres from the bat. So there's four men inside the circle, three very close. And that was Wozniakum's fate there. He's trying to hit over the infield. Watson saw him coming, angled the ball into leg stump, it ricocheted into the stumps. It's a great wicket for New Zealand. This time he beats him. It's a single, Jarvid on strike. There's certainly plenty of atmosphere here at Eden Park this afternoon. It's a capacity crowd, and still no one knows what the result of this match is going to be. It could still go either way. One's on the board, one gets the feeling now if they could pick up Jarvid, New Zealand, they could win this match. And there's Wright taking his time, he's going down to talk to Willie Watson, slowing the game down. With John Wright taking his time, not panicking at all. New batsman, Marlon Khan, having a word to Jarvid, me and Dad in the centre of the pitch. That's actually very good thinking by John Wright. When the tensions mount, when the players get too tense out on the field, it's just quite a good idea just to slow it down, and just to talk to a few people reorganize the field a bit and it's exactly the same for the batsman Jarvid out there he's walking slowly around the place looking cool calm and collected he's had another chat with his latest partner Moen Khan even Martin Crow on the bound is pretending to be relaxed but I bet you he isn't yes the third man brought up inside the circle the mid wicket going out so there's three on the fence on the onside fine leg square leg deep mid wicket they're hidden amongst the security men on the fence on the onside and it's Jarvid man that on strike Drive straight, there's a man at long on, Mount Khan threw quickly for the first, that's all. So the run rate ticking up, they really need a boundary here, Pakistan, they're on the way to 2-8. Well, yes, any boundaries would be welcome. Obviously, with the, the run rate required being over six and over, over one of all, then uh, you do need one or two extra blows to count. There's always going to be a dot ball somewhere, so uh, a little boundary now which has raised Pakistan's hopes again, but still 23 runs needed from 19 balls. Ron Khan on strike. Running with Inzman El Haq has thrown the game wide open here. They were coasting Pakistan, but the run flow has stopped. It's almost a trickle now. Bad ball, and that's four! That's what they needed. Watson buying a rare bad ball, and Noam Khan sweeping it past the fine leg inside the circle. It's gone all the way for four. The over is bowled at six for 244. Here's your money on Sunil. Oh, while well, Javed Mianda is still at the crease, I still fancy Pakistan to do it against India and Sharjah. He hit a six of the last ball of the match to win an incredible victory for Pakistan. So as long as he's at the crease, Pakistan is in with a chance. In fact, 19 runs of 18 balls is eminently gettable. John Wright, acting New Zealand captain, Danny Morrison, who has to bowl two of the final three overs. Probably will be Chris Harris to bowl the final over from the members' end. Three overs to be bowled, four wickets in hand for Pakistan. And what a final. It's had everything magnificent batting, some good bowling, some brilliant and indifferent fielding. All tension, all drama here at Eden Park. Well, Danny Morrison's the man under pressure now. He's got two overs left to bowl. He's going to bowl to Javid Mian dad this time. John Wright just setting the field, just trying to relax his troops down again. Four men in the circle, men everywhere outside the circle. Full toss, and he just glides down the third man. They surely look for two. He falls over deep. Pack Patel, the pressure showing here at Eden Park. Poor piece of fielding concedes the extra run. That's the sort of ball that at third man, in normal circumstances, you'd just come round comfortably, pick up, and throw back in. The World Cup semi-final in the balance. And Javed Mian did at the crease. Suddenly the pressure's there, suddenly the mistakes come. Morrison's bowled eight overs. Point one balls, no wicket for 50. So he's been quite expensive, so he's under pressure as well. 
Harvard Meehan there, which is cool as a cucumber on strike. He's 54. Drives into the gap. Get one, it's Harris, they won't take the two here. He's fielded brilliantly, he does it again. The throw's wild, but he was quickly to the ball. Harris, a star in the field for New Zealand. Chris Harris very quickly across the ground at deep cover there. Charlie Meehan there correctly deciding not to risk it on this occasion coming back for two. As it turned out, of course, the throw was wide and they'd have made it comfortable, but that's not the risk you want to take with a game in the balance at this stage. taking his time getting guard from umpire David Shepherd. Umpire's under enormous pressure in the final overs as well to watch for the no balls, the close decisions. 16 runs off 16 balls. There's been very few wides or no balls from New Zealand. They've done it fairly well. The field being rearranged for Moeng Khan. The man's come in from deep cover and the move and the field's now on the leg side. Full pitch. Doesn't get it away. Harrison hits the stumps. Ricochet, not out. Well filled with the backup. Listen to the crowd. Chris Harris seems to get everywhere. And he's hit the stumps yet again. Again, very, very close, but again, no way that decision was going to go against the batsman. He's been very accurate, Chris Harris, with his throws all day. Yes, he's been superb. He's gets 10 out of 10 for his fielding, under pressure as well. And it really has counted. Harris has been there. He stood up and been counted for New Zealand in the field. Chris Harris, a wonderful performance under pressure. 16 runs off 15 balls to be bowled. <coughs> Nicely placed. It's wider than that at mid-on. They'll go back for two. Safely back, good fielding by Rod Latham, the substitute fieldsman, but Pakistan now, if they keep it cool, should win this final. Well, it's still all to be done. Still the pressure on. There are plenty of gaps in this field too. It's, it's always a question just of that little bit of luck as to whether or not the batsman just hit the ball correctly, find the gaps, get through the gaps before. If it's hit straight the fielder, they've got to field it properly, keep that under control. It's all happening. Great rule that circle will form in inside the circle. It's made one day cricket. The pressure really on the fielding side now. Oh, he's got away fine. Patel's coming around. This time he picks it up cleanly. They're coming back for the second. Here comes Jarvis. He's struggling. He's there. Good running. The throw was wide. So Patel under pressure once again at third man. He picked it up beautifully, but it was a wild throw. Well, Moen Khan has picked out Divak Patel as a man to put under pressure down at third man. Previous one down there, he lost his footing. This time he's turned and thrown, and the throws come a long way wide of the keeper. And from third man down there, you've got to get it back to the keeper and get it back quickly. Otherwise, these two boys are going to get through for two with no problems. John Wright still chewing away there. Trying to ease his tension. Morrison, final ball, this over. Doesn't get a run, it's well bowled. It's the over, the 48th over's bowled, 6 for 251. Well, you were saying that uh, history is against New Zealand here. Yes, that's because uh, no host team has ever won the World Cup. 1975, 79 and 1983, the World Cup was held in England. England didn't win. 1987, Pakistan and India were the hosts. They didn't win. 1992, Australia and New Zealand the host. Australia are already out. And New Zealand look like they will also make their exit today. Pull something out of the hat, it's going to be Chris Harris to bowl the final over from the members end. Two to be bowled will be Morrison from in where we're broadcasting from here at Eden Park. So you don't feel for those guys at all. They've got the ball in their hand, the perspiration will be there, the adrenaline will be pumping. And you've got 40,000 fans screaming out, duck ball or wicket. 
Well, Chris Harris might be the leading wicket taker in this tournament, but he's not been the most economical bowler. If ever there is a test of character, this is it. Chris Harris, not a regular bowler at top level, and here he is in a World Cup semi-final with a big responsibility placed on his shoulders. And he'll be bowling to Javid Mihendad. Mihendad's 55 not out, and Pakistan need 12 runs to win with 12 balls remaining. He's charged, he's got a thick edge, he's gone to Watson at uh, third man inside the circle, just a single. So Javid looking to hit down the ground, found the outside edge. Mihendad looking at the shorter boundary over extra cover there, and had he got hold of that, he got it over the man at extra cover, that would have been four all the way, even with the edge, Nick there. There's only the, the man up on the edge of the circle at third man. And so many times we see the ball flying through third man for four when that's the case. Friday's missed, that's bad. He must put back to ball, pad to ball, there's only two men close in. Short cover, short mid wicket. And the pressure building with every ball here at Eden Park. So easy from the comfort of the commentary box to pull the shots. Moen Khan there trying to angle this down directly to third. Now there is a man there very fine on the edge of the circle saving that one. Moen Khan faces Chris Harris. Wright coming in closer at mid-wicket. Cover's quite short as well. He swung it. Back with a square, just a single. Good positive throw to the ball was aimed. So the tension building with every delivery here at Eden Park. I mean, Dad, just with four boundaries, he's been there a long time, really needs to find the boundary in this over. All of Chris Harris's pace there being swept like a spinner by Moen Khan. Harris is bowling into the teeth of the breeze here, the teeth of the gale. Me and Dad on strike. He's charged, he's hit it straight down the ground as a man defending, long off. He falls over, but just a single. So it's not over yet. Look at that crowd, the tension is enormous for the spectators that have been here since half past eight this morning. They've been cheering every run when New Zealand was batting, now the boots on the other foot. Well, every man of this crowd, every woman of this crowd certainly had value for money today. Big hit, it's gone for six, it's going all the way, that's six over off. Talk about good timing, that was beautifully struck. And if ever Pakistan needed six runs, this was the moment for it. Boeing Khan has hit this well back into the crowd. He's taken the long handle too, he's sliced it, sliced underneath it. Ten rows back into the crowd, six runs. And Pakistan's target suddenly looks a lot, lot easier. That was the tenth six of the match. Look at that, three runs off seven balls because Marlon Khan, the wicketkeeper, coming in under enormous pressures, had the nerve and courage to hit out a long off for six. Small ground, Eden Park, but it's not easy to do when you've got 40,000 fans here. Think of the millions around the world watching this telecast. He's pulled it, man out there at square leg, he's defending, it's going fine, it could go all the way, he's coming around quick, will we die? That's four runs, and Pakistan have won the first semi final at Eden Park. A magnificent performance by Jarvid Mandan into the no huck. And look at that, look at Jarvis. What a performance from the veteran. A magnificent win when you're chasing 262, you have to do all the hard work. Well, the entire Pakistan team has raced onto the field, and no wonder. This has been a fantastic batting performance by Pakistan. 263 was the target. Always looked a stiff target. At one stage, the run rate required was up to 8, 9 and over. Wickets kept falling, key men got out, and Zaman will hack their genuine innings and then was run out just at a crucial time. But Javid Mian never steered him home, and Moen Khan is the hero of the last overs. As it turned out, a six and a four off successive balls have been enough to take Pakistan to victory. Well, uh, yes, we've seen some great matches in uh, one day at the Nations, but none better than this one here at Eden Park. New Zealand won the toss. They batted well, they scored 262 for 7 of 50 overs. The captain was magnificent, scoring 91. And then Pakistan and Rupi have done it right at the end, 6 for 264. Jarvid me and Dad, the experienced cricketer, batting through when the pressure was on. But it was young Inzaman Al-Haq, he was the man of the moment. He struck beautifully when 
Pakistan will be behind in the run rate. You cannot feel sorry for New Zealand, you can, because they've led the tournament, shaking hands with umpire Shepherd, who done a magnificent job, as did umpire Bucknell, and the crowd giving their home team a tremendous ovation, and deservedly so. Well, the New Zealand crowd here at Eden Park have every right to be very proud of their team. They've led the tournament all the way, and it's only in the last few days, ironically, their first defeat coming against Pakistan at Lancaster Park at Christchurch. A completely different sort of match, a much lower scoring game there. But here at Eden Park in the crucial semi-final, there's no second chance here. Pakistan have come out on top and they've thoroughly deserved their victory. They've batted very well when it counted. The disconsolate Kiwis now taking what would have been a glorious lap of honour in front of their home crowd had they got into the final. Now you can see the disappointment etched on their faces. They will...